Welcome back to Comic Universe, the only nerd-centric thing you need in your life, DPZ Roland Solo once again, and here to give you another uh, comic review, uh, another comic graced to us by uh, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, know you're watching, so thank you once again. And today I'm going to be reviewing a Boom Studios book by the name of Deathmatch, written by Paul Jenkins and art by Carlos Magno. Uh, yeah, so this story is pretty much, because a lot of you guys probably don't know this one, but Deathmatch is a comic set in a superhero universe where all the superheroes have essentially been captured and are now being forced to fight in a, in a series of death in these fights to the death against one another. And, yeah, they're being... And they don't know why. So the big mystery is them trying to figure out why they're here, why they're being forced to kill each other, and why, you know, why can't they remember anything after they leave the arena? And also, what brought them here? You know, the, it's a big mystery of what's going on. So the first volume is the first four issues. And, yeah, right out the gate, I do enjoy... There's a lot of mystery and intrigue here. There's some total... Um, Myst there's a lot of mystery in here. I really dig where this mystery is going. I enjoy a, a you know all the little twists and turns, and they don't they give you enough, but they don't give you a lot. Um, and I understand it's the first four issues, so it really doesn't you know they're really not going to tell you everything right out the gate. I know there's only two other volumes to this because this isn't there's only an X amount of time you can do a tournament of a comic. There's only a an X amount of time you can make a tournament-style comic uh, for this. There's, you know, there's not a lot of time to do this. So our main focus is a guy named Benny Boatwright, who is a, a superhero by the name of Dragonfly, who's coming to terms with the fact that he murdered one of his friends, Apex, in one of the first rounds. There's also some supervillains here, uh, but they're, uh, you know, they're kind of on their own. What's interesting is that they don't call themselves, you know, they're soups, and the villains are called Fears, and the and there are others just called, uh, I think they're called Neutrals as well. So they're not really called heroes and villains. It's Soups and Fears. The other thing of note is that throughout the comic, you really see that a lot of these characters um, have their own problems. Like Apex, when after Dragonfly murdered him, he said he was, you know, Apex was a... Uh, a uh, bipolar nut job. He was, you know, so a lot of these superheroes aren't perfect, which is typical for Paul Jenkins because he's one of those superheroes who really likes to deconstruct the hero genre. And he, these are all characters who are, in one way or another, uh, like an, a an analog for Marvel and DC characters. Like uh, Nephilim is clearly the Hulk. Benny Boatwright is, pro is I think, sh supposed to be Shazam. Uh, Replic 8 is obviously. Uh, you know, Replicate is actually, you know, supposed to be Multiple Man. Uh, Soul Invictus is obviously, an, uh, you know, an analog for Thor. Uh, the Meridian is an analog for Superman. The Manchurian is an analog for, uh, you know, Ozymandias. The Rat is obviously an analog for uh, uh, Rorschach. And Sable is a female Batman. It's literally all of these characters, these Mar uh, they're all analogs for Marvel and DC characters. Which, in hindsight, I'm not going to really complain about. I know some people are going to bring that up as like, oh, they're obviously meant to be Marvel and DC characters. Well, hate to burst your bubble, but every character you see in other, uh, like 90% of other characters you see in independent comics are analogs for Marvel are for Marvel and DC characters. That is, you know, that's been the thing. Even DC and Marvel characters are analogs of other Marvel and DC characters. Deathstroke, uh, you know, Deadpool, obviously referenced as Deathstroke. Ta you know, uh, who is an analog for uh, Taskmaster, you know, Taskmaster. It's It's been done since Marvel and DC have been doing that, so, yeah. The fact that these are characters who are analogs for Marvel and DC characters that we know yeah, that's been done before. It's been done before, and it's been done by the co the big two companies themselves. So, yeah. May, uh, you know, I have no problem with that. Because you obviously can't have all the superheroes killing each other in these matchups. But yeah, these characters are brutally flawed at points, and the, the, some of the fights... Um, the fights are actually not really the focus. While this is a comic called Deathmatch... Um, the characters are kind of more, um, are kind of more, you know, are kind of trying to figure out, the mystery is more of the, 
the, the, the mystery is actually more focused than the match, and than the matches themselves. Well, there are some bloody fights in here, and there are some, ser you know, some serious words thrown around. It's actually more about, uh, they're more to help build the story. In fact, there's one comic where it just shows, like, the uh, outcomes of certain fights. Which, if you did come here for superhero carnage, you might be a little disappointed. You might be just a tad left out in that regard, because... That's not the main focus of this book. What is the main focus of this book is the characters coming to drip grips that they ha they are stuck here. They don't know why, and they're being forced to kill each other, and they still don't know why in this big tournament arena. So yeah, it's a neat series. So it's been a neat series so far. But like I said, if you came here to watch superheroes brutally killing each other, you do get that, but not in spades. That's not the main focus. Like I said, several characters get killed off, um, se several characters get brutally murdered off screen, or you don't, you just see the aftermath of who won. So, yeah, that's the, you know, that might be a drawback for the, for a comic called Deathmatch, it's not exactly focusing on the death matches themselves, so go into that when reading this book. Carlos Magno's artwork is, is, uh, excellent. I recently saw his artwork in the Kong Planet of the Apes crossover, so I really, you know, his artwork is really great. Um, Paul Jenkins is a really good writer, um, and this story is a excellent form of that. I really enjoy uh, his, you know, his storytelling. And like I said, it's a fun mystery, and it le this volume leaves on a cliffhanger. So if you like characters that kind of go through hero deconstruction, uh, this is the book for you. I, I I recommend it on that. But if you came to watch heroes brutally murder each, if you can't handle like mentally damaged characters, like everyone wants to do the next Watchmen, I know that's a thing. Like everyone wants to do the next Watchmen, you might you know this comic is not for you. Also, not a kids comic because some characters die really bad, and the final page is them showing the dead bodies of the superheroes. So yeah, um. Anyway, so there you go, guys. It's I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. It kept me interested enough to make me want to see the next two volumes. So, uh, Chris, once again, thank you so much for this contribution. And if you're new here over on the channel, uh, always remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's Mightiest Subscribers. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this review. Uh, comment below if you've read the comic and tell us your thoughts here, as always. And I am DPZ, and once again, we will see you right here once more in the universe.